54. Will someone care to read that for us? Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse, grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the cloud and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now I want someone to read Leviticus, the 15th chapter, verses 19 through 23. Leviticus, the fifth chapter, verses 19 through 23. Yes. Leviticus, I'm sorry, chapter... 15, I'm sorry, oh, chapter 15, I'm sorry, verses 19 through 23. Okay. Um, if a woman has a discharge and a discharge from her body is blood, she shall be set apart seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Everything that she lies on during her impurity shall be unclean. Also, everything that she sits on shall be unclean. Whoever touches her from the bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and keep unclean until evening. And whoever touches anything that she sat on shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If anything on her butt or on anything on which she sits, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. And if any man lies with her at all, so that her impurity is on him, he shall be unclean seven days, and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. Okay, thank you. The woman was rendered legally unclean due to the law. In uh, the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 19, if you want to read that. <clears throat> Luke chapter 6, verse 19. 6, 19. Yes. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. For there went virtue out of him and healed them all. And Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verses 37 through 40. Chapter 15 of the book of Numbers, 37 through 40. And then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, tell them to make houses on the corner of their fathers throughout their generation, 
and to put a blueprint in the castles of homes. And you shall have a castle that you may look upon in the remote of the commands of the Lord and do this. And that you may not follow the policy to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined. And that you may remember and do all my commands and be holy to your God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. The woman was forced to isolate herself. In Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19 states that if a woman had an issue of blood, she would be considered unclean for seven days, and anyone who touched her during that time will also be unclean until the evening. In Leviticus 12, chapter 12, verse 4. You want to read? Yes, please. She shall then continue the blood of her purification. Thirty-three days. She shall not touch any hall of pain, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purification are finished. In the 15th chapter of Leviticus, the Mosaic law, also known as the law of Moses, was revealed to Moses and Aaron by God. It reflects the eternal and holy character of God. The Bible gives at least four reasons God gave the Mosaic law to his people for their own good, to reveal himself to them, to set them apart in order to reveal himself to others and to reveal humanity's need for a savior. The Mosaic law, guidance and order. The Mosaic law is served as a guide to help the Israelites navigate their lives in a way that honored God. Holiness and separation. The law emphasized holiness and set the Israelites apart from other nations. It included regulations related to dietary practices, cleanliness, and rituals. By adhering to these laws, the Israelites were distinct and consecrated for God's purpose. Atonement and sacrifice. The law outlined detailed instructions for sacrifices, including the Day of Atonement. These rituals symbolize forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with God. These sacrificial system pointed forward to the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The sin offering is a sacrificial offering described and commanded in the Torah. And we know that those are the first five books of the Old Testament. Okay. It is a sacrifice offered by uninternational sin committed because of weakness of the imperfect flesh. And the burnt offering. The burnt offering actually means to ascend, literally, to go up in smoke. The smoke from the sacrifice ascended to God. A soothing aroma to the Lord, and that's in Leviticus chapter 1, verse number 9. If we read Leviticus chapter 15, verses 28 through 30, ladies, can you move up a little? Can you want to move up a little forward? Okay. Move up. Okay. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 28 through 30. But if she be cleansed for her own issue, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. Verse 29. And on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtle doves or two young pigeons, 
and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of that congregation. Verse number 30. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering. And we just talked about what a sin offering is. Shall offer one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. In Mark chapter 5, verses 26. You want to read? Somebody please read that, yes. Okay. And he had 26 verses. Yes. And, and he had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came to came to hand him. In the crowd, the church is gone. Okay. The issue, it swallowed up all her finances. Mm -hmm. She was going to different doctors, searching out help, searching out a resolution. But guess what? They couldn't help her. Her condition only worsened. If we read uh, the fifth chapter of Mark number 27, and I think you did read that already, mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, but could somebody, could you read it again, uh, verse 27? When she heard about Jesus, she came to hang him in the crowd and church his guard. In this Bible, it reads, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. And so I said, what does... When it, when it says that, what does that, what does that mean? And it, it actually says that the biblical definition to press is to press hard upon, to trouble, to afflict, or distress. And the Greek word for press, it means to squeeze or to compress or crush. Now, I guess a question that I wanted to just present to the class is, what are you prepared to press through to get to Jesus? Such a simple question, but the impact of it makes you realize that we are not always pressing into him. Well, let me just say this. Mm -hmm. uh, when she got there, there was a crowd of people. Yes. So she had to force herself through this crowd of people to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, unless you, like this Bible, we said that, mm -hmm. when she came to hang him, you know, pressing through the crowd to get to him. We're going to get to that. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get to that. <laughs> yes. 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 That's true. That's yeah. true. I have to that too, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking the English and the stuff that she's gone through, I can, I can understand her her, I, I, don't know, I don't know how to question, but I mean, she wanted to, she, her faith, her, she just, she, she believed when she goes, something's got to happen, and I got to get this tendency. So I can see her squeezing on, pulling, really hard, yes. like that, yes. to ask me to get some kind of really. Yes. And, and it know. stated how she had gone to numerous yeah. positions, and nobody could help her. No. This is very frustrating. I put myself, I can give an example. Okay. When I, I don't know if you guys remember how my skin was all messed up and yes. everything. Two years I was going to all the dermatology, my out. I mean, I went all over the place. They take biopsies and all this kind of stuff, you know. Nobody knew anything. And then finally, my allergist uh told me to uh, because look at the child something out the the dupixin. Okay. So I can get close to the top of dupixin. Okay. Because it definitely cleared my skin up. But it, it was still two years for People were supposed to know because I went to specialists, yeah, and they don't know, they don't know, mm -hmm. and stuff. But when they finally, you know, when it well, when God is ready for us to be put up, He put it in their minds, yes. you know, the right thing to yes. me in that. So imagine 12 years, I know. That's 12 years. Yeah. So if, if Philippians 3, chapter 3, verse 14, 
And I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The fifth chapter of uh, the book of Mark, verse 28, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Maxine? See, that's what, okay. The present is the, yes. she had faith that if she could just touch. Yeah. Yes. If she could just touch. Yes. She, she wasn't trying to surround him, confront him, or whatever. She had that faith that she could only just touch. Him. Yes, yes. And that's important to me. Okay. Yes, I mean, that I'm is. Really, truly that's the key. Yes. That's the key. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She came behind him in the midst of the throng with her deep craving to be healed and her sublime faith that Christ's virtue would. She had faith that he would. Yes. In Mark uh, chapter 5, we're going to verse 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in body that she was healed of that plague. And so I looked up straightway, okay? And the meaning of straightway is an action word. It means immediately. Immediately she touched his garment. Without delay or hesitation, it means at once, at once. Mark uh, chapter 5, verse 30, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him upon, about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? <laughs> Jesus said, who touched my clothes? In the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 19, can somebody read that? And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went out virtue out of him and healed them all. On the eighth chapter of Luke, verse 46. And Jesus said, somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. What's the, what, when he says virtue has gone out of me, what does that mean? Yes. 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 The healing power. The healing power. Importantly, when she spoke to Jesus, she was bearing her testimony before all in the gathering about Jesus' divine powers, how she was healed immediately. If we read the verse 47 of chapter 8, Luke, I'm sorry. I'll read it. Since I have it here. Since I have it here. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared, she, she declared upon him before all the people for that cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. The fifth chapter of Luke, verse 31. Can someone read that? And Jesus answered, said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Reading chapter five of Luke verse 31, and Jesus said, and Jesus answering him unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Oops. 
as soon as the woman touched Christ's garment, he felt that virtue had gone out of him and turned about and said, who touched me? The disciples mildly rebuked Jesus by saying, thou seest the multitude thronging, thronging thee, and say, if thou who touch me, they were rebuking Jesus. Perhaps her touch had been unnoticed by the eyes of those around. And she must have been one of many who touched the master that day. As he proceeded on his errand of love, but a touch of faith could not be hidden from him because of the faith that the woman had. In the 32nd verse of chapter 5 of Mark. Let me, let me yes, go on. But you just going to show you, all this time that they've been with Jesus, they still, they didn't have the faith that that woman had. Because mm -hmm. uh, for them to keep on being amazed about what, about what takes place, and they don't even know who they're with. And I mean, that was another teachable moment. And I can imagine how totally disgusted he had to be with them because it's taken them this long to, hold, to kind of see what is being done, what they're supposed to be paying attention to mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's just, you know. And then for the disciples too, they, they actually rebuked Jesus. Right, exactly. They no. said, you're in uh, this area surrounded by yeah. so many. Pressing against you, how can you tell? Yes, how can you tell? but he could because of the faith that she had. Mm -hmm. He knew. The 32nd verse of chapter five of Mark. Please. And he looked around to see her who has done this thing. Read for uh, 33 also. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. She acknowledged receipt of the benefit bestowed. Quickly, the physician, Jesus, saw the patient. She confessed her touch of his robe. She told him all the truth she experienced, what gratitude she publicly stated that her burden for 12 years had been rolled away. Another testimony Another in, testimony. A crowd. in the crowd. Mm -hmm. In the crowd. Yes. Right. Addressing mm -hmm. the uh, <clears throat> the passion that he had mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. makes a difference. It, is. it says that she fell not out of weakness, but in worship of Jesus mm -hmm. for what he did for her. Verse 34 of Mark 5. And he Someone said to please. her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Yes, and that's what Sister Smith mentioned that. Can someone uh, turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 22? Chapter 9, verse 22. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. From that hour. So, what is the meaning of faith? What is your meaning of faith? What is your meaning of faith? Someone? I'm not going to say anything because I'm listening. Someone? <laughs> Okay. What is the meaning of faith, Maxine? The meaning of God. Mm -hmm. I, I undeniably trust. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone else? You're believing without doubt. You just know because you found faith. And from our um, from the example in this true story, mm -hmm. it um it, it, it's a, a focus. Like when this lady was in this all this crowd and this clamor, and then she had she's a woman, she know knew how society felt about women and, and she is in this unclean state, but her focus was on walking towards Jesus, healing. And so faith for me, it takes focus. And in spite of all the clamor that might be in my mind, focus on Jesus, trust in Jesus, and realize that he sees me. Just focus. Anyone else? I feel I kind of I, I thought about that when I read it, and I said, you know, we 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 quote the scripture, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. do we really really understand or uh, strive to have that faith, mm -hmm. and then to utilize that faith? And to, well, to practice that faith. Because the more we practice, mm -hmm. it gets stronger. And we utilize it. And it helps us through situations that we have no control over. And so, it, you know, one a genuine faith involves abandoning all human reliance. Taking ourselves out. Oh, on self-efforts and placing total dependence upon God's character, his actions, and his promises as revealed in his word. And we can't know what's revealed in his word if we don't study. We don't even know. So, uh, got two hands. I saw did you hear me? Okay. Charmaine, Kathy, okay. And I always say, for me, mm -hmm. what else is there? Mm -hmm. What else is there? Mm -hmm. Faith. Mm -hmm. I, we, we have the word. They have Jesus. We can't see him, but I know that he is a deliverer. I know that he is in my life. And if it was not for him, I would not be sitting here right now. Mm -hmm. So my faith is in him no matter what. So I'm just like, it's, to me, it's easy. What else is there? I cannot do not one thing without God. I cannot wake up in the morning without God. So my faith has to be in God and only God. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I, I asked myself this morning too about that. I said I would, I would like to have that kind of faith that this woman had. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that I have to be at a point of at least three things coming after me at, at a time, and then when I finally surrender, <laughs> then and, and let God have it, then it it is it this it it's taken care of. But it's, I hate that I have to put myself through all of that before I say, oh my God, I, I, I'm done. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what else to do here, Lord. You know, yeah. and, so, and then when I finally surrender, then it's taken care of. It's not. But it's like, we know that God is able. But as, when we're going through stuff, you cannot, I can see clear enough to let it go and let him handle it. Because mm -hmm. I don't know it's just uh, me being impatient or it's just not, you know, I thought I could work it out or, or, or something. But until we finally surrender, that like God, God handle it. That's when it's really taken care of. Yes. Maxine? Um, Brother Clay always tells us that we do not know the total uh, thing God because we can't. We're just human. We're no human. Yeah. Uh, but things come up that I cannot explain. I have to depend on that faith, okay? That God got it, okay? And that he will take care of it. I have to depend
can do a lot of things that I don't know, okay? But I know that God knows. Mm -hmm. And that's faith for me, okay? I can't I can't explain some things, but I know that God is behind it all. Yes. So that yes. has to be faith yes. for me, okay? I have to have the faith that God is, you know, he's working and he's there. He's doing what God does, okay? No matter how it turns out, yes. no matter what happens, mm -hmm. okay? Thank you, God. Thank you. Esther? It's um, piggybacking on everything um, and looking at this story again. You, you, every time you look at it, I think it was just somebody brought up about the disciples. Yes. And yet, God used them. That strengthens my faith in him because mm -hmm. he is so patient. He's so merciful. Yes. He's so loving. Those are the traits are trying to build them myself. Mm -hmm. So why not just trust him? Yes. Because he's patient, he's loving, and he will teach you how to have faith. And the more you <laughs> utilize that, yeah. you know, the more you use it. Like, you know, you heard the saying, practice makes perfect. Yeah. Although we'll never, we'll never arrive at that point of perfection. Yeah. But the more we utilize that faith, it grows within us and we expand, we grow as his child. And the more you study, the more we study and read the stories in the Bible, what the stories tell us about faith and about God. How can you not know God? How can you not know that God is real? You know, I, and this is just me. I, I could not do anything without God. Mm -hmm. So I'm always saying, Father God, you know I don't know, mm -hmm. but you know. Mm -hmm. So show me what you want me to do. Mm -hmm and lead me in that direction that I should go. So I just have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Because when you read these stories in the Bible about the people mm -hmm. that were there, and you want to look at it and you say over and over and over again, he was like, right there. Y'all, you don't believe? We're here. <laughs> and we reading these stories, how can you not believe in God? How can you not believe that he put that sun up there? You know, so to me, faith is just knowing God and studying and reading his word. And that's what it says. If you study and read, you know God. You know that he is there. Total dependence. Total on him. And, and it, it said, abandoning all human reliance. What God has revealed in his word becomes our inner reality today. Rather than looking at life with our earthly eyes, faith sees through the lens of God's promises. A biblical concept of faith includes believing that God exists and that he is wholly trustworthy. I, I think I heard somebody think that about trust. Yeah, that trust, okay. So much so that we base our lives on him and his word. Doing what it says, no matter what our physical eyes tell us, mm -hmm. no matter what we see, yes. mm -hmm. no matter what we see, mm -hmm. through faith in Jesus Christ, we obtain the victory that has overcome the world. Seeing things through his eyes. Yes. Because we don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. And we have to rely totally on him, on his actions that we read about when we study his word. We we know and see and read about what he did and how he handled situations. And depending on that, 
because it is the promises that he made to his children. In the first chapter of John, verse chapter five, verses four and five. Could someone read that? First John. Yeah, first John chapter five, verses four and five. I'll read it. For who for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, through that we can overcome the world. One statement was made about the faith that the woman had. How can I have her faith? How can I have the faith like her? Having faith like the woman with the issue of blood is a beautiful aspiration. That's something that we strive for every day. Let's explore some steps you can take to cultivate strong faith. Believe in the power of healing. The woman believed that touching Jesus' garment would heal her. Trust that God has the power to heal and transform your life. Have faith that miracles are possible. Persist despite challenges. And we're going to have those. We're going to have those challenges. But we have to keep moving ahead, which is what the woman did. She continuously moved ahead. The woman endured suffering for 12 years. Can you imagine? 12 years. And sought healing relentlessly. Even when faced with obstacles, keep seeking God. Persevere in prayer. Even when it seems like nothing is changing, persevere in prayer. Draw near to Jesus. The woman physically touched Jesus' garment, spiritually draw near to him through prayer, worship, and reading the scripture. Spend time in his presence, seeking his guidance and comfort. Acknowledge your need. The woman recognized her desperate need for healing. Be honest with God about your struggles, your fears, your doubts. Admit your need for his intervention. I need you, Lord. I need you. I cannot do anything about this situation. I can't. I need you. Act in faith. The woman took action. She reached out and touched Jesus. Step out in faith. Even when it feels uncomfortable, it will. Mm -hmm. And others will look at you sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and try to categorize you or label you. But stepping out in that faith, trust that God will meet you where you are. Focus on Jesus, not circumstances. And Esther, you mentioned that. Despite the crowd and her condition, the woman's focus remained on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Fix your eyes on him, not on your circumstances. Remember his promise and his character. Receive his words. Jesus affirmed the woman's faith and declared her healed. Listen to God's words of love, grace, and healing. Trust that his promises are true for you. They apply to us also. They apply to us. Remember that faith is a journey. It grows over time. You deepen your relationship with the Lord. 
Keep seeking him, trusting his goodness and believing in his power to transform your life. Remember that faith is a journey. It grows over time as you deepen your relationship with the Lord. It grows. Mm -hmm. A certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And I said 12 years, that's 4,380 days. 12 years, that's 105,190 hours that she went through that plague. She went to the physicians and her issue got worse. They couldn't help her. They couldn't help her. Where men fail, Christ succeeded. He can heal those who come late to Christ straightway. And straightway meant right away, mm -hmm. immediately, at once. Christ rapid cures. And so I just, you know, when men failed, because we fail, we fail, and not intentionally, but we do because we're, we're, we're human, and we fail, but Christ never fails. He always succeeds, okay? Now, a question to ask ourselves well, and I said, all, so all of us, okay. Will I be curious? Will I be a curious one in the crowd? In the crowd where the woman with the issue of blood, where Jesus was, where his disciples were, and where his followers were. Will I be curious, the curious one in that crowd? Just looking around, just looking around, see what's going on. Or will I reach out to him in faith for healing or for help in my time of need? You know, that's, that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. That's taking ourselves out of the way. Mm -hmm. And that's asking and looking to Jesus for our help. And that's not being concerned about what anybody else thinks about it or say it's going to say about it. It's not even about that. It's about him. So how, what will we do? That's something just for us to think about. We've got to make the decision to get to Jesus. She was hemorrhaging and crawling, but she still got to Jesus. Jesus was surrounded and protected by the people around him. She was classified legally unclean. She could not go anywhere. She could not go to the tabernacle. She could not have anyone around or they would be then identified as legally unclean. Jesus was surrounded and protected by the people around him. She was classified legally unclean, ostracized, despised, but she still got to Jesus. Ooh. She still got to him, no matter what. No matter what. To get near Jesus, we must pray, we must study his word, begin to walk a different walk. So if that direction that we're going is not towards Jesus, we have got to turn and we've got to Take a different direction. We've got to take a different direction. Evaluating everything in our lives by asking, I said myself in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I said, does this take me closer to Jesus or further? What direction I'm taking, what I'm involved with, what I'm doing, does this take me closer to Jesus? If not, then I've got to repent. And I've got to turn around and I've got to take a different direction. Mm -hmm. 
If we want Jesus to stop the bleeding, we must make the decision to get to Jesus. What has Jesus redeemed you from? And you don't have to answer that. But, but we know that he has. Mm -hmm. Anyone care to share? I'm Kathy. Mm -hmm. For 28 years, I have been at the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Mm -hmm. 21 of those years, I had the supervisor from a nightmare. She gave, I mean, she terrorized everybody. Mm -hmm. Last year, she, they asked for the leave. Now, all this for the last 21 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking the person who, who's in the position now made such a difference in every that who she's come in contact with. This is the first time I can go to work and actually be at peace. Mm -hmm. And it's like our time is not God's time. And I mean I I prayed for her at times, and then there was times that she was just, man, she had so messed up, I just keep eating pray for her. But it, when I started saying, I go, I ask God to help me. I said, stop wasting time thinking about all the stuff she's doing to people and doing to me. And so and start focusing on what you need to focus on. And that gave you relief to get through the years and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just amazing how if you change the way you go about things. Yes. That, and it'll make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And one more thing too. It took 30 years for me to get over my mother's death. It just bothered me, my mother's death. And it was on my cousin's birthday. Two, three years ago, I was able to call her and tell her I was at peace. And she said, thank you, Lord. And so, because, I mean, it's, we're a far away, and I don't touch base all the time, but I know she can feel it, too, when I send her, because I couldn't send a birthday card. I couldn't talk to her about a birthday as it was. But finally, I, had, I was at peace. I said, and I go, it was amazing. I said, if some people, some of us are slow learners, <laughs> it takes a little time, but I said, our time is not God's time, and God's time is not our time. Yeah. So, it was right on that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. I, um, an example <clears throat> that keeps me strong with our waiver is um, actually my husband. When um, we married, he said it was going to be a short marriage because the doctor said he would he was only going to live until 35. Okay. If I was going. But God blessed him to live until 70. Mm -hmm. And we were able to have Ricky. Mm -hmm. It was our whole marriage was a faith walk. And when I get off kilter sometimes, all I have to do is remember. Some people think that God does not make miracles. Mm -hmm. I mean, that God does not heal. Mm -hmm. Yes, he still used the wheelchair. Yes. But at the same time, you know yes. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look what God did mm -hmm. every year, every year. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here added to the church because he dared to believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we believe together. Mm -hmm. And Ricky's here. Yes. God works. Yes, he does. He works. Yes, he, he does. does work. Yes, he does. Genuine faith involves abandoning all human reliance on self-efforts, on everything that we do or that we think we're doing. Placing total dependence upon God's character, his actions, his promises as revealed in his word. If a person suffers for a while from a complaint and seeks no medical advice, but in the end goes to the doctor and he says, you should have come to see me sooner. You waited too long. When you first saw signs of this problem, why didn't you make an appointment and come in and see me? But is it the glory of Christ that we can heal? He can heal those who come late to him. So you can come late to him. He can heal. He yes. can take care. He can stop the bleeding. He can address those concerns. Mm -hmm. You know, so so sometimes we, oh no, I'm not going to do that. It's just, it's just too late. I, 
waited too long or or there's nothing that can be done about it. That's not true. That's not true because the Lord can address and take care of everything. Everything. I got a text. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Did you have your hand on? Yeah. I, 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 I look back on my life mm -hmm. and there are times which you don't know how you get through something or something happens that you have no explanation for mm -hmm. and then you think that God has taken care of you all those years yeah. and in this situation and in that situation mm -hmm. God has taken care of you mm -hmm. okay? and the only answer is God, because you did not figure, you didn't do anything, because you couldn't, you can't figure out how this happened to you, uh, how this person came into your life and did what he needed to do or she needed to do mm -hmm. to get you through certain things. Uh, if you look back on your life, you can almost pinpoint, not all the way, but you can pinpoint how God has worked for you. Yes, yes. And, you know, I always look at Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ yeah. who strengthens me. Because in my life, one of my daughters, we didn't think she was going to make it. Mm -hmm. And all three of them, they didn't think that she was going to make it. And all three of them are here and healthy right now. Still have some things going on but you would look at them and you would not know. You cannot even tell which one it was that they said she may not make it. And so I guess that's why my faith in God, mm -hmm. that's, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Because I, you know, I, it was nothing I could do. It was nothing the doctors mm -hmm. could do. Mm -hmm. And I know that it was just God and it's still God. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's always gonna be God. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so thankful that God has allowed me to even see this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, every, every day, I'm just saying, thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. for the little things, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I feel so strongly about my faith in the Lord. I have nothing else. Mm -hmm. So through Christ, he strengthens me to keep going every day and to study. What is that study? To show yourself approved, you know? So I'm just so thankful. And I say, Lord, you let me live to be 72, you know? So thank you, God. Mm -hmm. And to see my children healthy mm -hmm. and to keep working in the church for you because I just want to go to heaven. <laughs> And I mean, it sounds simple, but that I just want to go to heaven and just try to do what's right. She went to the physicians and her condition got worse. Ooh. But God. But God. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And and just that that's a testimony in itself. Mm -hmm. The information you all want, it's a testimony in itself. And it's good that we can come together and feel comfortable mm -hmm. enough to just talk about those things that are close to our heart. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And that's what we're that's what we, you know, we're we're the sisters here in the congregation and we have one another. We have each other mm -hmm. with God in front, mm -hmm. with God before us. Yes. Yeah. So I, I was mentioning that I got a text message yesterday, and it was from someone who didn't know what we were going to talk about today. And I just found it interesting. And it says, when you are hanging on by a thread, <laughs> Make sure it's the hem of his garment. You know that. You know, it's it's just it's just a it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I, I just I'm so glad that everyone's here. 
I, I saw the I saw the snow when I woke up this morning about four. I looked out. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but you know what? You just gotta prepare. You gotta have faith. Yeah. And guess what? You all showed up. <laughs> I, I'm telling you. Yeah, and I and I and I said, you know, different things happened with me, with my children, with my family, and I said. Lord, you told me I must have faith. Yeah. And I must. Mm -hmm. I cannot worry about those things that I have no control mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. I cannot. I've got to just talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. And I've got to allow you to take care of it. Mm -hmm. And he does. He does. Mm -hmm. Because I would have worried myself to death about mm -hmm. some things that I have no control over. But he does. He takes care of those things, but just talking to him about it, yes. which he already knows, yes. just talking to him about it and allowing him and myself being patient. But one other thing, I was talking to someone and they were talking about difficulties and trouble and problems in our lives. And I, I said to them, which is something that I personally practice. I have to extend myself to others. Ooh. And by doing that, I take my focus off of that, that issue, that concern that I can't do anything about. And I put it and place it into someone else. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, when you turn around, he's worked it out. Mm -hmm. But that's having faith, knowing that he will address all of our concerns that we must trust and believe in him. That uh, is the end of my class. I'm glad that everyone came. And we're just going to just <laughs> continue to, to study and trust in God to work all of our issues and concerns out. And he will if we have but have the faith. Did you want to say that song last time? <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Doors. Uh, <clears throat> this is a good lesson. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Annie. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you. Yes. Um, again, Annie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Ladies, um, next month when I start my class, we'll be talking about faith. And we'll be talking about different elements of faith. Mm -hmm. And just listen to some of the, the conversations that I've heard from different people. You'd be surprised how what faith is really about and the different elements of faith. So we're going to talk about that next month. It's my class. And uh, <laughs> I have to go home and rearrange the stuff. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I pray that you all come out so we can, we're going to get deep into what faith is all about. So, so I'm just giving you everybody that has <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And he asked me to um to look at the hymn. Do you all uh, know he touched me by the gay first? It was written in the 60s. I'm gonna say the words really quickly and then I'll sing it. But the words are what really get me. Um Gloria Gay for the girl Bill has been like, but Gloria is the poet. She writes the words, he does the music and everything. But she said, shackled by a heavy burden, neath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me. Now I'm no longer the same. He touched me, he touched me. Okay. And then her, the next verse is, since I met the blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. And it's really good. So in the first verse, She's thinking about biblical stories, okay? But the second verse, she's thinking about how she 
when you accept God, what he does for you. Yeah. So that's the difference. And it's, more, it's like a one, two, three, one, two, three. I like to do this one on the <laughs> And guys, thank you for accepting me. I know I'm silly. I'm very animated. I deal with children. And I, and I just, I enjoy my life. Okay? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, it goes like this. Shut by your head, be burned up. the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me. Now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know. He touched me and made me whole. Let's try the verse as much as we can. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy. And all the joy that floods my soul. Floods my soul. Something happened. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. One more time, he touched me. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Now we're going to have our closing prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together. Thank you for our teacher. Thank you for the participation. Thank you for your loving arms of uh, protection. Thank you for our families, friends, and loved ones. Direct us to the Lord continually, and may we continue to have the faith that we need to share with others, and may we be obedient and faithful until the end. <laughs> Please, as we do leave this place, please keep your arms of protection around us and be with our family and your loved ones. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh and we have a little snack. You know how Sister Mel's been in here. She has a snack in room 108. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I have a little project that I want us to work on quickly together. Ladies, I have a little project I want us to work on quickly together, if you have time. Okay. Okay. I see that. I'm really to go this time. But um, the work is just taking part of it. And right now, yeah, the girl I'm coupled with, that guy, she had her twin sister saying that she said, um, she had, um, they induced her blood pressure to school, but they didn't know she was going to make it. But that, and so I'm covering for her. And so, you know, but that's how we're making it. We're looking out for each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One boy and one girl. Oh, that'll be a child. Yeah, she's actually with the only one. No. I'll see y'all later. I have to.
Yeah, it was. You know. Okay. When you get back, we have to hang out. Yes. And cool. I want yes. to look at, I can share my whole crazy stuff with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, 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 uh,